Okay. Uh, morning, everyone. Um, so um, I'm just going to talk briefly about treatment patterns of elderly breast cancer patients. Um, and this group of patients we've classified as over 70, um, but it's more, it's, it's not really the number, it's kind of the physiological status of the patient as well. Um, so we chose this topic because it's a diverse group of patients. Um, they undergo kind of varying management regimes. Um, and as we said, the physiological parameters are more important than their age. Um, they, they often have um, multiple comorbidities. Um, and this, this, again, is more important than just the age of the patient. Um, and we have very good guidelines in breast cancer, but often in this age group of patients, um, they do deviate from the standard management. Um, we don't always know the reason why, but um, we can learn a lot from this. Um, so there was a Cochrane review published in 2014. Um, and this basically looked at surgery versus primary endocrine therapy for operable breast cancer in elderly women. And again, this was in patients over 70 years old. And they looked at tamoxifen, um, so a, a endocrine therapy um, versus uh, surgery, so either mastectomy or breast conserving uh, surgery. Um, and they found that surgery controls breast cancer better um, than tamoxifen alone. Um, however, it does not extend the overall survival of the patients. Um, so they recommended um, that primary endocrine therapy should be offered to patients with ER positive tumors who are in, unfit for or refuse surgery. <clears throat> so we know in Ireland there's about a 1 in 10 risk of breast cancer um, and our recent figures have shown that there is an 85% five-year survival rate. Um, we can see from the National um, Cancer Registry that um, uh, we can see how we compare to uh, the UK, um, and you can see even across the UK there's there's kind of uh, great variation in um, how the patients are managed. Um, so, for example, in um, in the UK, even between um, Wales and England, there's great variation in uh, who undergoes radiotherapy. Um, I would uh, mention though that the data, you know, you could question the accuracy of the data because. You can see for Irish data, the completeness of the stage um, was less than 70 percent. Um, so in, in this group of patients, when they're over 70, um, they're beyond the age of screening. So basically they've attended us with um, symptoms or else they've, um, they're being followed up for a previous uh, history of breast cancer or breast surgery. Um, so when, they, when they're diagnosed, we generally discuss their case at the multidisciplinary meeting. Um, we look at the standard management guidelines and we discuss the patient and um, whoever's met the patient um, can give a, you know, a kind of a, an assessment of how the patient is, whether they're fit for surgery, whether they want surgery. Um, then we go back to the patient and discuss it with them and in conjunction then we try and make a decision as to what the most appropriate management is for them. And it's interesting in that, uh, in this group of patients, there is uh, quite a high discordance between, kind of, I suppose, standard management guidelines and um, what the patient ultimately, um, what their ultimate management is. And again, it, all, it isn't always clear why this is. So we know from our patients, um, our own patients over the last five years, um, in the over 70 years group, there was 522 patients total, um, and I've noted this included all of our patients, including recurrence and metastatic disease. And we know that 37% of these patients, they did not undergo surgery. Um, so in the 70 to 79 age group, um, nearly 20% um, didn't have surgery, and this jumped up dramatically to 64% in the 80, um, 80 to 89, and then only 17%, um, or maybe it's good, 17% of over 90s uh, had surgery for breast cancer. Um, I suppose the morbidity and mortality for breast cancer surgery, it's, it's relatively low compared to, say, abdominal surgery. Um, and then looking at um, the patients that didn't have surgery, um, what, what they did have. So we can see that in the, um, the 70 to 79 age group, 13.8% um, um, underwent, chemo, underwent uh, primary endocrine therapy. Um, and this jumped up then to... 60% uh, in the um, the 80 years old group and the then 73% in the more than 90s group. So all patients over 90 um, that were diagnosed with breast cancer, they all had hormone receptor um, tumors and they all went on to endocrine therapy. Only small numbers of these patients had chemotherapy and radiotherapy as an adjunct. Um, 
so just from our from our data, we can see that um, these these patients, these group of patients, um, they have less surgery, um, and they're more likely to have primary endocrine therapy. Um, and this is comparable to to our national data. Um, looking at elsewhere, um, there is some variation, um, but as we know from the Cochrane review, that you know the, the variation in management it doesn't increase the overall survival. It just gives better local control if you operate on the patients. Um, and then I'll just mention the Breast Predict program. We had Prof Gallagher here a few weeks ago to talk about Breast Predict. Um, and I think that this group of patients um, will um, benefit from the data coming out of this. We know that this group of patients, they do have, usually have um, good tumor biology and tumor characteristics. Um, and they, as we know, they, they often do have um, hormone sensitive tumors. And so primary endocrine therapy is an option for them. So it's just a uh, kind of a matter of building on that. Um, so just in terms of you know the ultimate kind of patient management, we we have the standard management guidelines. Um, historically, patients, um, elderly breast cancer patients, they were left out of trials um, because of their age. Um, so we don't have as many kind of uh, randomized controlled trials with this age group of patients. So we have less kind of specific treatment guidelines for them. Um, and then also, we could probably learn to better assess these patients in terms of their life expectancy, their comorbidities, and their functional status. And um, if any of these are improvable, if we could bridge them to surgery with endocrine surgery or with endocrine treatment and try and improve their um, their kind of status um, before operating on them. I suppose our ultimate aim then is just to um, give them the best information possible and come up with a you know an acceptable, safe treatment plan that's tailored to them. And so just in conclusion, um, there's ongoing research um, and we just need to have new strategies to improve the survival of these patients. Um, we know already that surgery and endocrine therapy is, is very um, it's good and patients benefit from it, but we don't have any um, we don't have any options for them to improve their survival. Um, and just to keep in mind that it's always patient specific management and the patients are very um, they can be they'll be, be very clued in and they'll be well able to um, uh, give their opinion on what they want and um, and what's suitable for them as well. Okay.